Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit 15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show. I'm your host, Catherine Basu. And this week at the Fit 15, we started the week with episode 106 and founder of Circuit Fitness, Elizabeth Squiat, trying to help you make fitness more fun by sharing the fitness format she created, Circuit Fitness, a circus-inspired workout with you. And we're continuing that trend again today with my guest, Emily Moker, who recently completed her first rollerblade marathon. Before I share my conversation with Emily with you, let me tell you a little bit more about Emily. Emily has her bachelor's degree in exercise science from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee and her master's in exercise physiology from UConn. She is certified through both the National Academy of Sports Medicine and the American College of Sports Medicine. She works as a fitness coach at Anytime Fitness in Windsor, Connecticut, and loves competing, whether it's running, biking, obstacle courses, or rollerblading. Well, welcome to the Fit15 podcast show, Emily. I'm so excited to have you as my guest today. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. So you did something really cool recently, and I had actually never heard of it before, and I'm, I'm really excited to, to share what you did with the listeners. So you did a rollerblade marathon. So can you talk to us about this? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it actually was really desired for me. I was um, kind of in a rut with training. I had done a couple half marathons and um, recently I've been doing a couple 10 Ks, but I was kind of like getting burnt out. So I wanted to change it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to my friend one weekend and he's like, you know, there's this like rollerblade marathon. I was like, stop it. (laughs) No, there's not. (laughs) Um, yeah, I didn't believe him. And, uh, we were Googling it and sure enough, it popped up. So, um, it's out of Duluth, Minnesota. It originated actually in Duluth, Minnesota. Oh, wow. And it's an inline skating, and they've been doing it now for 23 years, which wow. is bizarre. <laughs> I know. Um, and so that's where it originated. And, and the more we looked at it, there's a whole bunch of them throughout the whole entire country and internationally well as wow. well. So it's really interesting. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know how he felt about it because I rollerbladed in the past, mm-hmm. but like really recreational, like on the boardwalk, maybe my neighborhood, nothing more than like three miles and like leisurely. Right. And I could not wrap my head around doing a full marathon because the longest <laughs> that I've ever done was 13 miles. Right. Um, yeah. So it was crazy. Um, so I signed up for it. I'm an all or nothing kind of girl. <laughs> and um, yeah, the first couple of weeks were brutal. I was like, what did I get myself into? Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Um, so I did some research, like watched YouTube videos of how mm-hmm. to like push off. And it was interesting. It was really fun. And the more that I got into it, I trained like you would train for a half marathon or marathon. Okay. Like increasing your miles every week. Mm-hmm. Um, I did only one, I don't know, it's like a ride. It's not really a ride or run. I don't know, like a blading is what I would okay. call it. <laughs> During the week. I, I know, it's like weird. It's like, what are you doing for your, your workout? I'm going blading, running, riding. I don't know what you call right? it. Right? I guess blading sounds good, yeah. Yeah, blading. Yeah, I went blading. Um. <laughs> So I would do um, like a short one during the week. So I wouldn't go necessarily for time or distance. I just went for time. Mm -hmm. Um, And then on my longer, on the weekends, I did a longer one. Um, And I found it very relaxing. And it was so much easier on my joints. Okay. And it was amazing. It was really fun. Um, I trained the same way that I trained for a half marathon where I did like strength training throughout Mm -hmm. the week um, and lots of stretching. (laughs) 
Oh, I bet. Yeah. Lots of straw jeans. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, um, it was an experience to say the least. And <laughs> I had nerves up until actually the start of the race. <laughs> like, what did I get myself into? Can I do this? And I just have to cut on myself. You know what? You've done the training. Mm. The course is what it is. Let's just do this. And it was a lot of fun, actually. Oh, that's awesome. So, and I guess, so you, no, you, so you weren't able to do any like shorter rollerblade races before the main event then? Just just your training run, your training no. blades, <laughs> I guess, not run. Yes. Uh, yeah, I did nothing. Like it was like literally zero to 26 miles. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, you know, they don't, for blading races, they only have half marathons and full marathons. Oh, okay. I lied. I lied. There's 10Ks. Oh, okay. um, But they're very far in between. Most of them are either half marathons or marathons. Huh. Interesting. Um, Yeah, which is weird. But they do go by really quickly. Mm -hmm. They extremely quickly. Um, I am a very slow runner, like sub 10 minute miles. Mm -hmm. Um, and I rollerbladed at a sub five minute mile. Oh, okay. Wow. So it's like double half the time. Yeah. yeah, Double half the time. (laughs) The opposite of double. (laughs) Double time. time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was great. So I finished my marathon in just under two hours and 30 minutes. Okay, cool. So So would you say then, I mean, I know you weren't able to do a, a half rollerblade event, but so you would probably say though that it's easier than running the same distance. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, my stamina was good. Like, it never. You know how when you run, you kind of feel like you kind of get out of breath and you sure your breathing alters. Um, the only time that I would say, and it wasn't just for me because I was rollerblading actually with somebody that I met on the bus and she's never done this either. Um, so we rollerbladed the course together. Mm. Hi friends, it's Catherine. And if you are joining us for an out and back 15 minute walk, you want to turn around now. All right, back to Emily. And the only time that we ever really felt out of breath was going up hills. Oh man, they had but hills. the beauty is, <laughs> yeah, there was, there was just a little mini hills, nothing okay. crazy, which is good. I mean, nothing like a, you know, vertical incline like San Francisco, nothing sure. like that. <laughs> I would have cried. I really, really would have taken off my rollerblades and just been like, I'm done. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, you know, and that was the only time that I ever really felt like out of breath is like climbing the hill, if you would. Um, mm-hmm. But the rewarding part is that when you hit the top and you came down, you just coasted. You <laughs> no, didn't have funny. to do anything. It was <laughs> perfect. <laughs> oh, goodness. So. Well, that's really cool. Yeah. So you'd only really done a little bit recreationally before, and then you kind of use the YouTube videos to work on technique. Any, any like other tips for, for technique-wise for rollerblading for people considering it? Yeah, (laughs) Um, more, you know, it's more of like a push off motion in gliding. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, like, and I was doing it at the beginning too, it was kind of like a stepping motion for me. Um, But to save your energy, it's kind of more of like a push off and glide. Okay. Um, So it's more of like a smooth movement versus a choppy. And um, when you had that gliding moment, your body kind of follows it too. Um, and you save a lot more energy. So cool. in the beginning of my stages of working out, I was definitely like, oh my gosh, two miles, I'm done. <laughs> um, but watching the videos and practicing, I was way better. So oh, cool. yeah. yeah. I guess, yeah. I guess with anything, right. There's always, there's always tricks of the, of the trade. Technique. Yeah. <laughs> Even like with running and the heel striking, it's like, come on, it's rollerblading. How hard can it be? There's actually technique. <laughs> I mean, I definitely, well, I love running, but hearing about that, the marathon I was, for rollerblading, I was like, I don't know. I mean, I haven't done really much rollerblading at all, especially in a, in a long time. I don't know. I'm impressed. So it seems really cool. 
it was it was really fun and then and you know it's like something new and exciting too and I like read up like oh my gosh like just like with running shoes like you know mm-hmm. are you a minimalist or are you like do you need arch or ankle support there was like so much like do I want a high boot a low boot do I want bigger wheels do I want three wheels do I want four wheels do I want a brake no brake I'm like oh my gosh oh, wow. there's just so many choices oh wow um, yeah so I kind of got educated in that sense and it was really it was fun and exciting did you end up getting like a new a new set of rollerblades for the for the race then or I did <laughs> yeah I did I was like you know come on let's live it up um, but yeah, it was really fun. Got them all jazzed up, and I was ready to go. So super cool. So where, yeah. like, where is a good place to get your rollerblades then? Because I'm just trying to think. I mean, I know here in Southern California, I see rollerblades like in the window all the time, you know, like in different stores. But I wonder, like, how common that is, and where, you know, how do how do you go about like getting your your better rollerblades? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um. So one of the first things that I did was like, I went to the inline skating page um, that was for the marathon and they had a couple like recommendations um, as far as like what to, you know, what to look for kind of thing. Um, But honestly, some of the top notch ones came from like the sporting goods store, like Dick's Sporting Goods. Is there a Dick's out there? You know yeah. what? I'm not actually, I haven't seen one, but there could be, and I haven't maybe got out enough. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Um, but yeah, so any like sporting goods store, and I was like, wow, yeah. So like they have pretty high end ones. Now, when you huh. want to get into like the elite, elite groups, then you have to like get them specialized. But like I was just doing it recreational. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. So. But yeah, any sporting goods store is pretty much going to have a pretty good skate boot for you. So, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. I know. So obviously, as a personal trainer, you, you probably you didn't just rollerblade. You you've included some stretching. You you mentioned and some strength training. Any like specific moves that you felt were like really good to add in for you know for rollerblade specific training that you'd recommend people consider? Or? Yeah, one of the things that I absolutely Absolutely would not. Um, as I stayed away from the bike as much as I love riding the bike, um, mm. because the movement, your hip flexors do feel a little bit. Um, they take a little bit of a hit when you do mm-hmm. uh, the rollerblade. Um, so being on the bike just, you know, makes it a little bit weaker and doesn't get it stronger. Um, so I actually did like the stair stepper, um, and then I would do like little, just short little sprints. Um, mm-hmm. And then any, like, unilateral stuff for, like, pushing off. So, like, speed skaters, um, Mm -hmm. any, like, band work um, just to Mm -hmm. keep your adductors um, that good. So it was a lot less – oh, how do you want to say this? I did do strength training, but at a lower weight, higher rep count. Sure. Um, But I did a lot more functional stuff, um, too. That was a little bit a different way of myself training, but it paid off a great deal. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Um, yeah, no, I could definitely see how that would help. And I mean, I don't know because I haven't hung out with that many rollerbladers, but do they ever complain? Are there like certain injuries that are common to rollerbladers or that would like you don't want to, you know, try to avoid or? <laughs> yeah. No, the one that I heard um, on the bus ride to them was a lot um, was your hip flexor, and it mm. mainly was the one that was your dominant side because that's where you get a lot more of that power movement. Um, oh, okay, that makes sense. But nothing of like you know like a hamstring tear or anything like that. Like you know right. when you can get kind of in or plantar fasciitis, nothing. So it's actually a really um, low impact joint friendly, you know, event to do, um, which was nice just to kind of take a little breather from the impact of running from my knees. Um, so yeah, yeah, it was injury free the whole time. It was amazing. No, it's awesome. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Keeps you motivated when you can actually get out there and not have to be worrying about when you can next get out. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Um, yeah, so it was, it was really, um, but stretching, I will say again, I can't emphasize like the stretching 
just with running, um, but also just, just stretching. I did yoga twice a week just to kind of keep mm-hmm. it nice and, you know, loose. Yeah. And it's a awesome. key. Very cool. Yeah. And then, you know, so you, you chose that race all the way out. You said it was in Minnesota, right? Yes. So yeah. how did you find it? How did I find that specific race? Yeah. And how did you end up choosing oh, yeah. um, that one? It is. Um, actually, it is the number one um, race. Uh, I want to say like the association, the inline skating association, um, mm-hmm. Duluth is the number one like place that they do it. Um, wow. So I was like, why not just go to the center and yeah. do it, you know, give it a whirl. And um, how many people ended up, like how big is the event then if it's the number one? Yeah, it actually, because it is a sport that's not, um, you know, very popular, or I shouldn't say, um, it's just not well known. There were about 2,000, mm-hmm. um, but there were different oh, ones. So you could, you could roller skate, you could roller blade, um, and then okay. there was different divisions. So there was like the elite groups. Um, okay. And then there was like the recreation, like mine, like so the first time people. We're like in the recreational okay. group. So they separate so they kinda, you. Okay. So if you were, yeah. if you were really fast, you weren't going to get, you know, you weren't going to be going, going over other yeah. rollerbladers. Or <laughs> if you're no, slower, you're you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was nice. It was nice knowing that they, like the group that you were in were like the same pace setters that they were just, you know, doing it. The fast people were well done before we even got there. <laughs> what like so, I wonder what like what time were they doing the the marathon in then? Well, it actually was really interesting because on that day there was a guy who was trying to break the world record and oh, wow. do it in less than two hours. Okay. Okay. So I believe he did it in an hour and fifty. Uh, uh, yeah, an hour and fifty eight minutes. Oh wow! So he might have done it then. He might have done it. I never did check the official, but yeah, he was like going huh. for it. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was really good. So it was, it was really good um, just as far as like just at the pace of people and how they set people through. Um, and I never saw a roller skater out on the course. Um, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it was really, it was good. I felt comfortable, which is good. Very cool. So, so do you think you'll you'll do it again or <laughs> um yeah, I would like to do it with somebody. Um because they're very strict about not having headphones in. Um oh, okay. Which was different because I've always been a runner who had headphones in. So right. it kinda of kept me motivated. So it was in another different training aspect because I trained with no music. Um right. So to have somebody like kind of talk by your side would be key. Um, mm-hmm. So if I did it again, I probably would do it, lure somebody to do it with me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, uh, maybe one of your clients, you know, be like, <laughs> yeah, be like, hey, I got this really cool event. It's called rollerblading. Do you want to do it? Thanks. Let's do it. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> So any, any, yeah. now that you, you got the rollerblading event done, do you, are you changing up your training and doing anything else, you know, after recovering? Uh, yeah, no, I did actually do quite a bit of yoga last week. Um, nice. although like my hip flexor didn't hurt, um, my upper body, you oh, know, okay. sometimes with yeah. running like your lats and your, your rhomboids, that's probably what was the most, um, stiff to me. Um, so I just rolled out and did yoga quite a bit and it was good um so last week I took off pretty much except for stretching Mm -hmm. and now I'm gearing up um this weekend I'm doing the rugged maniac race (laughs) oh wow so you're so you're still going (laughs) I'm still going (laughs) Um, yeah but after this weekend I have no idea what my next endeavor is going to be I'm open to anything um (laughs) I'd love to try new things so oh that's awesome yeah. So, so yeah. you're based in Connecticut, and if people are looking for a fitness coach, you know, where that that obviously likes to make things fun. Where, where are you taking on new clients, and where could they kind of connect with you? I am. I am. I love it. 
Um, I am based out, um, I work for Anytime Fitness, and mm-hmm. I am at the Windsor Connect, uh, location. So, cool. yeah, cool. I'd love to have meet new people. We make it fun. Um, yeah. It's all good. Awesome, Emily. Well, any yeah. any other, like, tips or insights? I'm sure you have a lot, you know, working with, with clients and yeah. from inspiration, but just for the listeners before we officially say goodbye. No, um, just definitely do your research before you do a race. So you know that mm-hmm. what you're getting yourself into, um, you know, practice, train, train smart and listen to your body and have fun on race day. Awesome. I love it. Well, thanks so much, Emily. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to the fit 15 for show notes and more visit fit slash podcast. See you next time. Hi friends, it's Catherine, and if you are tuning into this episode the day it went live on a Friday, I wanted to remind you to subscribe to the show because we go live with a new episode five days a week, Monday through Friday, and I will go live with a new episode on Monday, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the episode, or as I like to have you think of it, your reminder to get moving for at least 15 minutes during the work week. So hopefully you'll look into hiring a personal trainer like Emily at some point just to get some of the basics down or for some added motivation or to mix things up. But if not, I hope the podcast will serve as your personal trainer on a budget. Just that reminder to get moving and be consistent and get inspired to make fitness fun. I hope you enjoyed this week's episodes. We'll subscribe and leave us a review if you haven't. That will definitely make my day. Enjoy your weekend and I will talk to you on Monday. Bye.